Okay, uh, terima kasih uh, kita punya tuan pengerusi majlis. Um, Assalamualaikum dan salam sejahtera. Thank you for being here early in the morning, in the Saturday morning. Uh, I think first of all, I would like to extend my thanks to Gallery Petronas for uh, organizing this event. I think it's a, a very important uh, program. And today, um, <coughs> uh, we are very happy to bring in two esteemed panelists, uh, Dr. Shamiza Abu Hassan from UITM Melaka and also Beverly Young. Uh, supposedly, uh, Encik Badrul Hisham Tahir, um, Gallery Petronas um, curator, uh, was supposed to be here, but unfortunately, uh, due to some unforeseen circumstances, uh, he cannot be with us today. Yeah? So, I think in that sense, we will uh, be allowing extra time for uh, the question and answers later. Uh, so, uh, today our our intention is to actually have a, a kind of conversation um, <coughs> that is uh, basically um, based, uh, 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 referring to uh, Dr. Sarina Abdullah's latest publication, yeah, which was released this year, entitled The Malaysian um, Art Since 1990s, The Postmodern Situation. And, um, but before uh, I start, let me just uh, briefly introduce to you uh, two of our panelists today. So, uh, Beverly Young is a co-founder and director of Rogue Art, working as a writer and curator specializing in Southeast Asian art, having spent 12 years as a gallerist. She read English and History of Art at Cambridge University. Her publications include Wong Hoi Chiong Shifts, uh, together with Jun Yap in 2008 and Yi Ilan, The Fluid World with Adeline Ui in 2010. This year, she became the editor, together with Furuichi Yasuko, for the fourth volume of the curator's book entitled uh, Condition Report, Shifting Perspectives in Asia, which was published uh, by the Japan Foundation Asian Center. Correct? <laughs> All right, and then we have here Dr. Shamiza Abu Hassan. Um, who received her bachelor's degree from Mara Institute of Technology, which is now the University Technology Mara, in 1994. Um, and she obtained her master's degree in creative arts from Wollongong University in Australia in 2000. And also a doctoral degree from RMIT University Australia in 2008. She's currently teaching um, at the Fine Arts uh, Department at the Faculty of Art and Design um, at UITM Malacca. Uh, her work is deeply rooted in her Malay womanhood experiences as an artist um, and drawing on her interest in Malay cultural narratives, tales and legends. She expands literary metaphor and traditional craft sensibilities with a contemporary approach, often using found materials and objects to create provocative sculptures and installations. So she is one of the not so many uh, female sculptors uh, in Malaysia, uh, a living heritage, heritage of sort. <laughs> okay. um, all right, so that's just a brief introduction of our uh, panelists today. Um, I think to cut things short, I would like to just uh, directly extend um, my first question to Ms. Beverly Young. Um, so, um, you know, as one of the editors for the Narratives in Malaysian Art, together with Moa, <laughs> um, how do you feel about the uh, transition or the progress of Malaysian Art since back then, since the 70s, when you talk about postmodernism uh, uh, being, uh, having started in the 70s through the uh, new scene, mystical reality, and um, yeah, I th maybe you can take it from there. Thanks. How do I feel? Um, I think one of the things about the project that we've, we've been um, co-editing, uh, the Narratives of Malaysian Art Project, is that there were so many different views um, of this history and um, so many gaps to fill 
Uh, and through, through, through working in that project, I mean, I learned an awful lot, but I also recognized there were lots of gaps. So the first thing I'd like to do is actually thank Dr. Serena for finally doing this, for bringing so much of this information together. And finally, we have um, someone who's given care, time, research um, to, 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 this, to this history, um, especially from the 70s onwards. Uh, finally, we have works discussed in, in, a, in a manner where, which references other writers, other re researchers, catalog texts. I mean, I think it's an amazing feat. So I think, can we all please give a big hand to Dr. Serena first? Um, for her work. Thank you. Um, it's, it's high time that we, we, we have this publication, so thank you for putting all those years into this work. Um, yeah, so I mean, I mean, I don't think I have personal feelings. Um, I think it's been a learning process. Um, uh, I think it's interesting to comparing um, uh, um, sort of the texts in, in, this, in the narratives publication to, to all the research and, and conclusions that Dr. Serena came up with. Um, and, and how there are correlations and there are um, similar works highlighted, artists highlighted, um, and it's obviously there, there is a body of research and discussion out there which is um, kind, of, kind of coming together. So it's very exciting that our art history is coming together. Not that there's an art history. I mean, the whole point of our project is that, um, that there are so many different viewpoints and perspectives, but that there is a consciousness and a sense of discourse now. It's much stronger. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, um, right. Uh, perhaps I would like to ask uh, Dr. Shamiza herself, um, as, a, as a, an artist yourself, uh, and also as an academician at UITM Malacca, uh, how do you feel about the, um, uh, the shift in um, artwork production yeah? uh, since the 90s until today. Thank you, Kahanim, uh, uh, as the uh, moderator for the talk. And um, salamu alaikum to all and a very good morning. Yes, I am um, a practitioner and I am the, um, the breed of the 1990s, I guess. Uh, during that time, um, most of my Lecturers, <clears throat> uh, they are all the stars of Malaysian art, and I guess uh, the impact for me as a student is um, was very significant. Uh, with during the 1990s as well, there are events um, that is uh, indirectly related to the uh, art and design of UITM mission. Yeah? Uh, as Dr. Sharina has um, actually discussed comprehensively in Chapter 2 about the NEP National Education Plan, <coughs> touching um, the overview of uh, the 1990s movement of artists, art scene, the audience, and um, the, um, the uh, ideas yeah, that actually uh, flourished during 1990s, <coughs> mainly um, because of the, the, uh, the criticism uh, and the curatorial uh, aspect of uh, those important events, such as the Young Contemporaries, um, Salon Malaysia, yeah, uh, Philip Morris during that time, yeah, and um, I, I get, I guess that um, basically. Were the things that really um, effectively? Um, uh, what, how do I? Uh, effectively, effectively uh, touch uh, most of the art and artists. Yeah. Um, during the 1990s as well, 
the National Congress has been so important yeah, in uh, especially I'm coming from ITM at that time as part of our policy as well in uh, UITM to enhance all this national pride, uh, pre boomy and all that yeah? uh, as we compare to the dynamism of um, what is currently happening uh, at this moment, I'm sure that definitely need changes, need to be altered in some way um, to accommodate the needs of uh, today's, the needs of the, the current scenario yeah, to the art scene. I don't know whether I answered you well, uh, uh, Kak Hanim. Yeah, a bit, a bit nervous too because for me, the topic that Dr. Sarina brought forward is very, very important um, to the institution as well, especially the universities that actually spread out uh, all the curriculums, syllabus and academics. Yeah? Uh, we might not have to stick to what the 1990s only, but to consider, to open up and to suggest and propose uh, the more relevant uh, kind of approach yeah, to the students that is, uh, they are actually going to be the graduates, they are going to be the emerging upcoming artists soon. I guess with the crowd here, I believe uh, they are academicians. I saw Prof. Jailani Abuasan here. I saw um, a few from UM, Dr. Lin. I saw uh, the Khan's families here too. <laughs> I saw Marhanum here too. Yeah, this is a very, very, um, I guess, important person uh, in the art scene and have contributed a lot to the impact of our activity uh, towards postmodern yeah, um, today. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Shamiza. You want to add up? I just wanted to uh, yeah. pick up on two things, and you've covered a lot of really, really important <laughs> topics in, in, your, in your short time. Um, but I, I think one thing was um, just coming back to Nahana's question about the 70s and, the, uh, and its um, development. And I think, yes, I think one of the things um, that struck me um, from, from the reading was uh, how education education actually was was the difference um, how the artists who, who who emerged in the 60s and 70s conditioned by um, perhaps overseas theories and um, uh, developments and their education came back with a certain um, approach um, and the 90s generation which largely came out of um, local education systems um, ITM MIA um, and, and that was and that was that, and I think that preludes what you were saying about um, what does education do now? What's coming out now um, from, from the state here? And, and I think there's not been enough assessment of that, as you say. I think that's a really good extension, an extension of your research now, <laughs> perhaps, Dr. Serena. Yeah. Um, and the other thing I wanted to pick up on was the ferment of the 90s. I mean, you talk about, a lot about policy institutions um, and how important these were in, in the encouraging art. But I think at the same time, um, it, it, what, what made it exciting was that suddenly, um, as one collector said to me, suddenly artists had so much to say in the 90s and that came together with um, all this sort of uh, support systems both internationally and locally um, and so it was a really exciting time and I think well you know all of us kind of grew up in that sort of grew up in the Malaysian art world at that time and I think I feel really privileged reading um, uh, about it that we were we were sort of we were there to witness it um, and obviously be part, very much part of it as artists um, here <laughs> yeah that's all I want to say because uh, I just I am just curious, you know, when we, when I asked uh, Dr. Shamiza just now, because she was, I'm sure she will be totally involved with the uh, with the planning of your curriculum and syllabus for UITM, for instance. I mean, are you greatly affected by the policy uh, of the government in uh, determining your, you know? The, the subjects and the syllabus that you have to 
Well, um, yeah. of course, uh, but as I mentioned earlier, uh, I am the breed of 1990s, yeah? And um, during that time, I guess, without all this uh, media technology, uh, without all this WhatsApp, Facebook and all that, uh, we are still referring to books, you know, we are very tied up, face-to-face -face kind of uh, training, I guess. Uh, I normally uh, been um, sharing, I mean, they, they chat, all the artists that came from, I mean, they are among my supervisors, they are among my lecturers, yeah. They sometimes demonstrate and, um, in fact, share their involvement in the art with us directly by calling us to the studios and so on. And that is the most important part that really affect um, myself and a few of my colleagues as a student where we've been exposed to the direct um, training yeah, with the artists. And the opportunity of being involved as an assistant for, you know, organizing shows and so on is further, um, you know, uh, mempengaruhi, yeah? mempengaruhi uh, personality ataupun uh, gerak hati yeah? uh, pada ketika itu. Yeah? Uh, in the sense of teaching, when I came back from Australia, I guess uh, the new generation needs more than what I have gone through with the media, technology and so on. Uh, sometimes uh, it is in their hands by one click. They get to know, uh, you know, the event and so on. And yet, they didn't understand it uh, thoroughly. Yeah? Um, they didn't get the impact because everything is on the screen. Yeah? So it develops um, uh, a different scenario altogether. But at the same time, as an institution, UITM especially, um, is still holding the same kind of uh, approach where we did uh, earlier, you know. So this needs changes. This needs to be firstly looked upon into and discussed further, you know, to ensure that we are at par with our development. Yeah? The, uh, and in fact, with the dynamism of Malaysia Baharu, uh, which I believe effectively um, you know, uh, touch uh, and influence a lot of this new generation, uh, we might go roja again. We might go, you know, um, in the situation of flux, I guess. Percha, <laughs> percha modern. Yeah, percha, percha, yeah. The, the fragments of uh, postmodern, yeah, as, as uh, Dr. Serena put in her term, yeah. It's not postmodern, it's... it's is percha, percha modern. Yeah? So that is another interesting um, uh, word that I digest and I go through um, in the early chapters of Dr. Sarina. Yeah? So I guess uh, I love to hear what Dr. Sarina too, <laughs> I mean, can, <laughs> can actually uh, share with us. Yeah? Um, the comprehensive studies and research that you've done actually um, a point to ponder to the institution, I guess, uh, that we, we have to be more open and get together again, um, not to segregate by discipline, but come together in what we have gone through during the 90s. Yeah? Um, in the institution itself, uh, they have been a, a movement where we encourage cross-discipline uh, rather than just stay in the same discipline and, you know, uh, be um, uh, limited with the discipline. Uh, we, we encourage cross, we encourage 
people from architecture to come and join us and you know uh, we go to them and so on okay maybe Definitely, you, you have some experiences dealing with a lot of, uh, I think, alternative spaces before. Yeah. Maybe you can talk a little bit about uh, the, the, the context of postmodern art. Yeah, it's it's yeah exactly. Oh, you mean sort of outside of the institution yeah. during the 90s? Um, I, w I wouldn't say I had a lot of experience. I think probably actually more through um, research and talking through people. Um, I, I was part of a commercial gallery scene, <laughs> uh, which is not quite alternative in those days, um, and, and no longer certainly now. Um, uh, yeah, so I think there was obviously, um, it was interesting how I think artists from the 90s were, were straddling, um, playing all fields, uh, coming out of ITM or MIA um, and being part of that kind of um, dynamic, and then searching out into the, into the commercial field as galleries came up in the 90s and starting a career as solo artists. Um, and at the same time, places like um, Gallery Petronas coming up, um, the National Art Gallery being quite pretty active um, and playing that institutional field. So, and there are not, not so many artists in the 90s. Um, yeah. um, so you, you, you really see quite a lot of activism um, and that was quite interesting. And then as, um, and also among, among those artists, a number of them would be starting, uh, also still feeling that um, they, they wanted to find a way beyond these sort of commercial, um, institutional platforms to find their own space um, to say what they wanted to say in the ways they wanted to say it. Um, so a, a, a few of the key artist collectives would have happened in that time, um, um, and artist initiatives among them, Yasen Kassini and Pera, um, KP, which Nohanim started, Mata Hachi group came up a little bit earlier, um, Ruma Ayapanas, and, and I think these are very, very key, key, key alternative initiatives that, that I think made a big difference to the way we were, um, uh, we developed um, in our Britain modern way. There were all these different things happening. Um, same players, same artists working in all these fields, you know, in some ways. Um, but these different discourses happening. Um, and I think that internationally, perhaps, um, there was a sort of pickup of um, like a recognition of, of the more alternative scene um, happening, because that's what's inter what was interesting. Um, uh, I'm not sure how that's developed today. I don't know where that quite, that's quite going today. I mean, I think in 2013, we had a, um, as part of the narratives project, we organized a round table for artists collectives and um, initiatives for these groups, and many new groups had come up since then. Um, but already in 2013, there was a sense of where do we go now? Um, how, how do these alternative, um, uh, so-called alternative, non-institutional, non-commercial spaces go forward? Do they get, um, um, do they start working with urban planning and cities, you know, city planning is, and, and that kind of thing to, um, to be part of that growth? Do they start collaborating with um, authority? Um, and then as the artist population has grown, um, how do they connect up? So I, th I think that's still very much in the air. I don't know, perhaps I'm a little bit um, also out of touch in that sense with the newer collectives, but um, that's quite different. Thank you. I think, I think later Dr. Sarina can uh, you know, share her thoughts as well. But okay, I want to ask Dr. Shamiza, because uh, you are also a sculptor and you produce uh, works. <coughs> Uh, just now you mentioned about the uh, new technologies, uh, you know, the bombardment of uh, very uh, fast-paced uh, information. Uh, you're saying that students, um, you know, they don't have the, the same understanding as you had during your generation. Because uh, I think that earlier generation had more opportunity personal touch, uh, yeah. you know, personal uh, experience with the subjects, with the, uh, uh, you know, it's as compared as the new generation which just, you know, look at screens and so on. Yeah. So that was, I think, about the um, ICT uh, agenda yeah. uh, that were formulated in the 90s and was supposed to revolutionize education. So I'm just asking, uh, uh, with the arrival of the fourth industrial um, revolution now, 
uh, whereby we, I think, on a daily basis come across bots and machines. And there's also this technology of 3D uh, printing, again, uh, whereby there's no need for artists to produce any more yeah. sculptures. Manually. Yeah. <laughs> machine boleh buat semua tu kan? So as a sculptor yourself, how do you feel? You know, is there a great challenge? Mas artist? Sometimes I feel I'm a bit outdated too. Um, because I I am very comfortable with my material and uh, uh, you know, as an artist of the byproduct of 1990s, I guess the, the modernist uh, approach it's more towards technical, it's more towards um, uh, material driven, you know, um, and um, compared to the era of the millennium, yeah, uh, I can differentiate or my expectation to see artists of the new breed of the millennium uh, will use different, different uh, methods or different techniques than what I have done. If they repeat what I did, uh, they will be the same, you know, we are not moving. Yeah? In 1990s as well, the, the influence of uh, Hasnol, only a few of artists during 1990s, they are the one pioneering this uh, electronic and digital art, uh, but again the the flow as times develop, um, the same the same product. I mean, been dominated by the same group of painters, especially due to survival, due to commercialization I guess uh, because new media has been a very idealistic uh, so-called approach that most of our graduate cannot survive that long to you know keep on produce uh, during that time but uh, as we go further after millennium um, artists like Fuad uh, Osman um, and a few I guess uh, those Matahati groups and um, performing arts with Rumah Aipanas and a few alternative uh, group not coming from institution they are graduates that come together and you know create their own studio spaces over here um, uh, especially in uh, KL, they have formed this this influence to the youngsters, yeah, whereby the youngsters miss out all that in the in the education uh, in, in their formal education, yeah. So this create gap, and uh, but looking at the the uh, current scenario nowadays, I guess commercial. Uh, values of artworks is still the priority among our graduates. Yeah? Yeah. Can, can I ask a sort of related question? Yeah. Um, uh, in, in terms of um, passing on uh, and the inheritance of, of knowledge and, and, and things, um, and also looking at educational influence and the influence of our own art history, now that there's a bit more information um, about what artists have done for the past 30 years. Do, do young artists today um, have a strong awareness of what was going on in the 90s, uh, or 80s or 70s? Do, do they, is, is there some sort of con continuity or response to, to our modern, postmodern art history at uh, all? In your, in your experience, I mean, obviously. Uh, right. You know. uh, I guess they are concerned by Googling. Sharing not. <laughs> <laughs> not like us without the smartphone we 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 make sure we will be there and you know they they answer you correctly when we ask. They answer, you know, uh, 
that artist is doing this, 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 this. But they didn't go actually. They just, you know, witnessing from the screen. So I do that as well as an artist. But I feel like the um, attitude of being in that space is, is still the most important part uh, of the, the, the idea that digesting here. Yeah? Um, I don't know uh, the gerakan of a few uh, uh, individual studios uh, develops um, as the commercial galleries develop. Yeah, this this uh, there's a studio bendang studio. You know, little little studio develops. Yeah, and they also involve in this. Um, alternative events that is not formally in the gallery but they gather among themselves yeah? um, um, but not that like those 90s uh, we're being nostalgic yeah <laughs> <laughs> it would be nostalgic I guess so I guess so I mean I mean I think obviously, but, I mean, obviously there is some sort of vibe there is some sort yeah. of commu continuity continued uh, sort of community yes. um, I but, guess home yeah. home is like encouraging and pursuing uh, but yet um, the in Bahasa Melayu we call it niat the niat to be an artist and niat to survive is in this yet to survive, you know. You do that because you want to sell. And if you sell, that's it. You, know? you didn't push further. Okay, I want to represent Malaysia to, you know, to, to, to bring up cultural identity or an idea that is the most advanced, you know, things, things like that. Well, I think even just developing your own practice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, know, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Short of making all collectors sort of really get into new media, ephemeral. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I, I don't really know where do we go from here. Uh, at one stage, you know, you feel like it's like so overloaded already. You just don't really, like for me myself, you know, you can really appreciate, you know, this uh, new media and, 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 and you, you tend to uh, come back to the that's why I said, uh, in terms of production itself, do like I, in ITM Malacca, uh, do you feel that it is ne necessary or vital for students to know about all this uh, postmodern uh, concepts and things like that? Yes, because we, in in uh, my institution, especially in UITM, they spread out the lower, I mean, uh, the undergraduate diploma level in branch campuses and degree level in, in main campuses in Sha'ala. So the, the, the branch campuses uh, are more focusing on just basic you know, art to do all the basic disciplines to make sure you produce accordingly to what been required in the curriculum. Um, whereby in the 1990s back, again being nostalgic, uh, we were centered we were centered just at that main campus and from that point we spread you know uh, to a, we call it diploma during that time but we learned almost everything and the source of um, trade uh, what do you call supervisors and uh, lecturers coming from those who are involved in this National Art Gallery Institution, uh, Petronas Institution, you know, such as uh, Chung Kam Kau, uh, Sa, you know, all this, Sulaiman Isa, those critical person that is vital in the art scene, yeah? So, that is uh, as well, yeah? When you separate lower level and higher level at that different distance uh, it created this impact too because last time is is only just one degree but now we are terminating it to lower level diploma yes you 
have graduated and we offer you degree. But they didn't go to degree in fine art, they end up in other area, they cross other area. Yeah? That's funny. Yeah. Can I just, um, to, uh, I, I recently uh, took part, at, well, moderated at a, a curatorial forum um, for young regional curators. And uh, there was a, Viet the, uh, a participant from Vietnam who runs the factory in, in, uh, in Saigon. And uh, his story was quite different. I mean, if we, we, we think of Vietnam as being um, full of uh, sort of artists uh, producing maybe more commercial work or uh, entering that field, um, and, and, and it being a somewhere where there are lots of artists. Lots of young artists working, and he was saying that actually all the all the main art schools are drying up. There's less interest. Um, they're all in danger of closing down. And Vietnam might be somewhere where there will be no um, art school in the near future. It's it's a real danger, which is a huge surprise for me. Um, it's a very different context from Malaysia. But you know, I think that if we look around the world in different kind of um, situations, uh, the, there is a crisis in our education. Right. Um, uh, and especially in sort of a pressurized context. I'm not sure where in a pressurized context, but in the sense of uh, what is the meaning of, 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 of art in a society? Why? These are still questions we come back again and again mm. to. Um, why mm. do we make art? Why do we support mm. it? Why is it important? Mm. I mean, it comes back and I don't, I don't want to go into here, but mm. it comes again and again. I think that's always a question that young artists have to, yeah. have to address. Yeah, I think I would like to recall uh, also uh, remind us about uh, Prof Jai's latest uh, status on Facebook that also questions about the peranan pelukis and blah 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 so later on I will make sure he will talk about this uh, topic um, apart from that I think uh, what you mentioned just now uh, triggered uh, another, another question which is about um, you know, uh, outsider artists, artists with no formal trainings. Is there any more need for people to go to art schools to have, to gain their art knowledge and so on? Because nowadays even uh, in the art scene, um, you know, curators, writers, all now have, uh, we have people coming from different fields. Yeah. Uh, we have like uh, people from uh, psychology, yeah. social sciences, you know. And then artists pun, even um, we've got people in literature, right. okay, right. dah start, dah jadi artis. Uh, so th there is another level of, uh, I think, challenge for the existence uh, artists. Uh, so this one, yeah. yeah. So macam mana peranan institusi art nanti kan? Yeah. So, so because when Beverly uh, said about Vietnam yang sedang menghadapi, yeah, mm -hmm. is now facing the you know, deterioration in terms of uh, its um, art education, can? Uh, in fact, in, in, frankly speaking, in, in UITM itself, we are uh, having a problem of enrollment already. We've been, been warned sooner or later, you know, uh, that will be a crisis. Uh, uh, but that's, I guess, um, uh, the point that I tried to uh, bring up e earlier, uh, brought up earlier, is the education system as well need to be um, adapting the current scenario and accept uh, the values that is more relevant to the nowadays needs in the art rather than stick to the old, you know, uh, policy and you know th that need to be a very um, vital discussion such uh, Congress 1971 maybe <laughs> I don't know what so when will teacher, it happen I don't know <laughs> <laughs> this Congress I guess yeah and furthermore um, well now Art Expo has been running for like five years five years already five years <laughs> 12 years already, yeah? And that, that is also a sign 
uh, of um, international uh, you know involvement in our art scene has also played a vital role to the uh, to to move us you know further try further we haven't we haven't um, explored a certain kind of technology yet so maybe you know time to adapt and consider and so on but that may be the role of uh, a non education institution um, to fund maybe to, to create um, you know funding or maybe um, a colloquium coming from the real industries i guess uh, to the authority of the institution such as uh, the the head of faculty make them involved so that they are they they the, their power can be utilized yeah to the to the right and relevant I, I, I guess Dr. Sarinas uh um Beverly were talking about the, the end of strategies that <laughs> Dr. Sarina concluded. Yeah maybe maybe we can share Beverly. Yeah <laughs> finish this book quite late. <laughs> I will confess, but no, I wanted it to be hot off the press in my mind. Um, no, I actually, um, uh, I think to move away a little bit about from infrastructure and support systems, um, and maybe come back a little bit more to um, practice. Um, and I, I, I think a lot of what maybe t today is about, about Serena's book and, and our anxieties about education is about this um, this transfer of knowledge. How do we use um, our art histories? How do we how do we use our experience of art um, in, in a positive way, or, or how can it be useful to us? Um, and I and I think I think that for me is what's the hanging question. Um, and why why is art useful? Um, um, and and I, I, I sort of what what Dr. Srinivas book kind of it made me yes and nostalgic and 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 kind of excited again about the 90s looking at those works and what they were saying about who we were and and how artists were so bold to come out and and say these things in such audacious ways you know um, in performance putting on ga gas masks burning books I mean all this kind of stuff burning grass um, it's, it's yeah of course um, and and I remember coming back because um, I came back in 96 97. Um, uh, with very little knowledge of Malaysia, I mean Malaysian, but I grew up, um, I, I was studied abroad for, from since I was 11. And, um, and I, I suppose I was more or less committing myself to, to, to being here and part of Malaysia despite the language barrier. Um, and art was my way um, to kind of start understanding the history, the politics, the problems, um, the, 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 not just identity, but, but history. Real, real people problem, what people were. So I mean, I think art was art, and, and the languages that the artists, sort of artists, have been coming up with, have been really important in that sense, in that transfer of knowledge. So um, Gallery Petronas has been the site of so many yeah. really important um, yeah. uh, uh, moments like that. So right. I think maybe, maybe we're all just getting older. Maybe the art scene is just getting too big. Um, mm. I miss a little bit that sense of urgency. I, maybe yeah. it's just me. I don't know. Maybe now young people go out and they get really excited about stuff, and art changes, rocks their world, and changes right. um, their ideas of things. Um, but I feel um, maybe because we've got bigger, this has is a bit less now. Um, I, I, yeah. I get less excited. Yeah. I, I see less excitement. Yeah. A little bit. I, I, there's still one or two shows. And this year, yes, I, I've seen things, but I don't know how other people feel. Um, um, yeah. Well. Uh, when I attended the Bainale in 2016, um, what I witnessed there, uh, the Singapore Bainale, yeah, the Singapore Bainale 2016, not, not KL, the Singapore Bainale, um, it triggers me how artists portray the cultural and uh, the representation of the current from their respective country in a very modest I guess, right? um, uh, in terms of uh, 
material into more uh, ideas. Yeah. Um, I guess uh, that particular artist uh, were influenced by the environment, of course, by the environment. And when the vinyl, uh, such as KL vinyl, comes in uh, recently, that also a mark for our development yes, uh, towards postmodern, yeah, towards postmodern. But I don't know how effective it was uh, to the institution, education institution especially. Yeah, um, the KL Biennale, as I compare to the Singapore Biennale, um, whereby in Singapore the the institution that play important roles, LASAL, the National University of Singapore, has uh, put their own um, what do you call, uh, professors there to to be moderating and uh, you know to, to conduct the the uh, sharing session and so on. But it's not happening here in KL Bainale. It's just merely artists. I guess, and not not a, an urgent discussion among the institutional side. Yeah? Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, because maybe at that time I am not able to be within the context of uh, events that KL Bainale has uh, provided. Yeah, uh, but I guess um, that event, that big important event. Uh, should be uh, involving the education system as well. To have our last uh, remarks, you know, um, uh, before we invite Dr. Sarina herself to the front. Um, and what do you see? Uh, perhaps in the coming 10 or 20 years time, you know, uh, is there any pot, uh, possibility for more uh, interesting and fresh? Um, of course, uh, of course. Uh, uh, emerging artists, uh, the young uh, in the form of experimenting, I guess, uh, among a few that I follow through, this media, social media, they, they, are, they are trying hard to experiment and uh, to, to share yeah, um, consistently uh, through media. But the audience might be uh, the person that should uh, push their motivation further. Yeah? If they are doing it uh, without, you know, um, the acknowledgement from institution, the acknowledgement from um, the non-education institution as well, uh, they might end up demotivated and stop <laughs> sooner or later. So uh, I am excited to see more experiment coming up. Yeah? We have uh, rows of uh, uh, promising young uh, talent such as uh, Budin, yeah? such as um, um, they, they are not doing the conventional way of uh, art, but trying and experimenting new things. Yeah? Uh, that's, that is the things that we witnessed during 1990s, when we saw Zulkifli Yusuf is not just uh, practicing um, his sculpting through the normal discipline, but trying explore sand, explore here and there. Uh, but uh, we need to encourage more of them and uh, not to just merely support them commercially. I mean, uh, the, the, the commercial, I, I guess, here, it will be safe for painters <laughs> only. <laughs> the arena, they can survive. Yeah? But for those who explore other media, like like sculpture, like um, new media, they are feeling like, oh, I have five years time to go, will I survive, will I stop, you know, things like that. But I believe uh, 
KL Bainale is already uh, approved. Yes, we are moving further. We are moving. We are going to develop further. But in what direction? Uh, can we be like 1990s? Yeah, Dr. Serena? <laughs> I agree. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean the the not the 1990s breed, but can we? Yeah, Spirit. yeah, yeah. The proliferation. Of, uh, uh, yeah, that that uh, final chapter that you have suggested. Yeah. Um, I, I'm going to bring it back to kind of. Uh, I think I said just I asked just now. If we thought Malaysia Baru kind of offered hope. Um, a new vision for artists, but actually, I think it's kind of—is it actually the end of a, yeah. end of an art history, and end of you know, end of Malaysian art history as we know it in a, in a sense? Because a, a, allegedly, allegedly, <laughs> you know, all, all those big issues that everyone was grappling with and, and that anxiety, allegedly, that's supposed to be dissipating now. We've come to the end of something. So I wonder, if, uh, even on that thought, what what impact? fight for anymore, I guess. <laughs> I don't know, nothing to complain, maybe. Like, when I uh, when I observe for the cartoon Izuna, for instance, uh, usually they he will uh, he will draw things, his cartoons, to, to, to criticize uh, the previous government. And now it's a bit much um, there's nothing, no, no, no issue that he can. You know, lots of issues. <laughs> lots, lots of issues. But, 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 yeah, it, but it, it takes a little bit more time, lah, than usual, I think. Yeah, I think it will, it will in some sense, uh, affect also the the uh, fine art, the visual. I I met Jai a few days back, and um, listening to the. Uh, BFM dialogue with Jai. Um, Prof Jai bring up uh, that they, he decided to switch off uh, and move further and back to um, basic. You know, uh, that is the result of Cherpan Cherpin, I guess, um, as as. Uh, a response to what the current scenario but I don't think it will be the end but it will be more dynamic it will be more I don't say rebellious but it will be more um, ideas coming up uh, but still digesting like we have passed 200 days uh, give ourselves like uh, another 300 days <laughs> To come up with something, I guess the the the, the what do you call the um, impact is actually uh, effective. Uh, I mean, uh, affecting affecting the whole nation. And if Jai switch off, what happened to the rest? Jai switch off with the you know the end result is coming back to the basic. But what about this younger generation? If they feel like they are tired too. And they bring forward yeah, with with the the scenario. Maybe they bring up a different beauty. I don't know. Maybe they, they bring up a different uh, revolution of art. I hope so. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you so much for your opinion. And I think we should uh, have Dr. Sarina here. It's already twelve o'clock. Thank you, Dr. Sarina. Uh, okay, I think we should already open for question and answers uh, to the floor. If anyone has an opinion or you have a question, I'm like you know, very grateful for all of you to be here. You know, despite um, I guess like late night parties on you know Friday night. <laughs> okay, anyway, I would like to thank also Petronas Gallery and also like the fact that actually Petronas Petronas Gallery. At uh, Jalan Shamudin, the, the older Petronas Gallery was the first place in which I was go to when I was going to Central Market. Like in 1997, 1998, I was here as an, a diploma UITM student, uh, ITM at that time. Then I always go to Central Market, like, and 
we take all the bus from you know bus from Klang and all that coming in to Central Market. So I always go through Petronas Gallery, masuk tu dekat bawah. Eh? So that's where I first enjoyed my you know art galleries, art shows, and trying to make sense of the kind of artworks that I'm looking at. So um, you know, and um, the the gallery was very nice. I mean, was in terms of like the cross is that the National Art Art Gallery like across the road uh, near now the current Majestic Hotel, can. So um, you know, I think because of the lighting, you know, of Petronas Gallery, I always enjoyed myself in the Petronas Gallery more than the National Arts Gallery. <laughs> but <laughs> so, um, but, but in a sense that um, that the environment helps me to sort of like appreciate arts more. And always the question is like, why are these like artists doing this kind of arts at just this point in time? That was always the question that kept on like crosses my mind when I was like. You know, walking and then you know, um, you know, as as I tell my students like the menghayati lah kan, menghayati karya-karya seni tersebut. And uh, when I'm taking uh, from karya art class, it's gonna be like you know, the you, know, you learn the terminologies of aesthetics and stuff like that. But basically, I was just not an AD student. I was not an art and design student, but I was from the uh, interior design from his, uh, the FS. Uh, FSP, FSP, FSPU lah. Okay, I was from a different uh, bidang. Eh? Uh, but then that was the question, and I had that question a long time before. If you were to read my introduction of the book, this was actually a part, or actually was from my PhD thesis. So that that kind of question lingers a long time, because like I do not understand the, the kind of artworks I see. I could not understand how does the artist sort of like produce this kind of work at this point in time. So that was my main. Um, persoalan-persoalan yang berlegar di kepala and when I decide to do or to write my research proposal for my PhD and of course bila uh, this book was published I ataupun like before I, this book was published or the decision to to have it published as a book um, I was lingering along the lines of having uh, using the terms should I um, you know rather than use the term postmodern in which mentioned just now percha modern that was actually a reiteration of of uh, Hasno Jamal Saidun's term that he used in, in a few of the articles that he dealt or had written in the uh, late 1990s at that time. Huh? So should I retain the postmodern as a you know overarching uh, theoretical framework, or should I use the more contemporary word, contemporary art? Okay. Jadi, uh, jadi uh, the question was that like should I shift this? But then I think. Um, that we are able to talk about the 1990s, though now the term postmodern is quite passe, like actually, kan? it's like kind, kind of like outdated, you know, uh, because nobody talks about postmodern art, people are talk, talking about contemporary art. But I think this is very important because no, nobody like exactly talks about the 1990s, even the collect, collect thing wise, um, I, I don't think the, even the National Arts Gallery is doing good enough in terms of collecting the works of the artists during the 1990s. So I think I just let the premise, uh, the original premise of the book, um, re be retained lah, okay, as the you know postmodern mission art since the 1990s postmodern situation. In which, for me, my argument in the book is that uh, this is not the kind of postmodern art that is like sort of like um, uh, developed or from the West. Though, um, though in my research, there's a lot of like writings in which like we use a lot of like Western terms. And it was not actually sort of like discussed in terms of the local uh, local application of all those terms. So um, the term is that sort of I make a local contextualization, which is I think it, it rings well with the whole you know like a uh, Western narrative of postmodernity at that time. But then actually it goes or we had the prob problem of postmodernity much earlier. We were already talking about it earlier, but we. We do not use the term. Sebab kita masalah kita ialah kepelbagaian budaya, bangsa dan sebagainya lah, agama. So we deal, uh, we deal with that so much earlier than uh, you know in terms of America or Europe or you know British uh, uh, United Kingdom in general lah. So kita most of us are so either we are looking at American context or when we are looking at at uh, you know British context lah. Because that's the two big uh, Western nation influence that. Um, mempengaruhi either in terms of education or you know the kind of output that we do the kind of things lah. Okay, I'm, maybe you should open to the floor. <laughs>
Any question? Hi, uh, my name is Masrina from UKM. Um, Sarina is a very old friend and we discuss on the issues of um, she's doing on fine arts, I did on literature. So we did agree on the idea that when we talk about art, when you put an S there, it's arts, it's literature, um, performing arts, um, fine arts will be inclusive. So we have the same issues of, um, you know, the slowing, the, the slowing down after the 1990s. So she took up the postmodern perspectives on the Malaysian art, which I took on Malaysian literatures in English after 1990s. So the problems with literary scene as well is quite similar with what you have um, your name just now, Dr. Sharmiza, when we talk about not many takers um, registered for the course in UITM. Similarly, that we are having in UKM, we have lesser students coming in, even as postgraduates, because for them to maintain in the literature fields, literature major, uh, would be challenging for them to find job. So therefore, UKM and I think University of Malaya as well, we are introducing such double majors, so-called like collaborations. Um, we are encouraging um, academicians to take up research that do collaborations because we can see here the current situation that even though um, some performing artists or even fine artists, they did participate in performing arts as well. For example, they are doing props uh, which I'm very interested in new media or network performance when it comes to doing the theatre performances, which I did collaborate with, I do collaborate with Dr. Serena to come up with such research. So such collaborations is what, to come to your question just now, the moderator was, um, would it be that the current situation, a lot, uh, many of the artists not coming from the background from arts, uh, fine arts for example, they d dwell in the area of um, so-called as Malaysian art. But I think we are not challenging, we are not challenging, we are not also denying that there are some um, students or some um, what we call it people like writers or dramatists, they are also very interested, keen interest in fine arts and therefore they try to experiment. But to experiment, they, we do need experts in the area like Dr. Serena, you and many others. So we need some sort of um, sharing, a collaboration. We are not challenging, we are respecting dalam bahasa Melayu, Universiti Kebangsaan, bahasa Melayu, kami menyantoni kepakaran yang sedia ada. So in terms of respecting the ideas and the expertise we are collaborating and with that we hope we can come up with something new because we can see the emergence now new media and then the people in performing arts also experiment with the new media as well and also we can see people um, in in music when they do um, video uh, video music and whatnot they do use some sort of like new media coming into picture so that is what we call it the trends now so Yes, takers, problems and such, it happens in the education system, but um, what can we do about we move, uh, we move forward by looking at the trends or maybe we can collaborate and work together so that we can get something new perspectives out of it. Yep, thank you. Any more questions from the floor? Yes, please. Assalamualaikum and selamat sejahtera. Again, thank you for being with us today. No? I think dalam majlis ilmu yang pagi, yeah, yang diadakan pagi, selalunya tidak ramai kehadiran. But I'm really very, um, with such enthusiasm, it gives me the, the, the feeling of satisfaction to see so many of us here today. Uh, allow me to introduce myself. I'm with Gallery Patronas. This is my 22nd year with the gallery. I was there perhaps when you visited us at Daibumi Complex, 
with her since 1992. And I must give my salutations to National Art Gallery, which had been the impetus in the establishment of Gallery Patronas. We were like um, <coughs> working together with Gallery then at uh, the Majestic Hotel. This is a little bit, you know, if I may take you down the nostalgic road, yeah? <laughs> when we were at Diabumi and the National Art Gallery was then at the Majestic Hotel. Juan Waira then was the director and had um, came, she came to see the management whether we would want to be a satellite venue for the National Art Gallery by putting their works from the permanent art collection to be shown. And um, in 1992, the founder of Gallery Patronas yeah, was our late Allah Yarham Dan Sri um, Zainal Abidin. Yeah? He, was, he took the idea and um, we projected the collections of the National Art Gallery and we grew from there. So, kalau Puan Waira tak ada di sini, I would like to really convey that heartfelt thanks. Uh, she was actually the shaker, if I may say, at that point in time to imbued the idea of corporations being an active player in the movement of modern and contemporary art in Malaysia. So that was part of that history and we moved on in 1997 at the new space within this iconic uh, Petronas Twin Towers. And of course, um, the journey has not stopped there. A little bit about myself, I was molded in the 80s yeah, by the likes of Dr. Sulaiman Isa, Tang Tak Kang, names that you have mentioned, yeah, they were all my mentors and even to today, um, they are my soundboards. And um, another lady, an outsider who is a writer, almost an art historian in the regional art, who had passed away about six months ago, Allah Yarhamah. Shari Naziri was also part of that fraternity. And uh, I like the way that the doctor who had just spoken, you know, about how are we going to survive now in the next 20 years. Of course, we have the foundation, the earlier foundation laid for us. And we are challenged. Not only are the artists being challenged, it is also the cooperation such as Petronas being challenged. And here, Gallery Petronas, yeah, um, as a platform, as a platform um, for the dynamics of the art movement to be further expanded, to be further enhanced, and how can we make, um, how can we be the differentiator in marking Malaysia within our very own regional art history. Um, I like the word integration. I like the word collaboration. This is where all of us together, from the multifaceted um, labyrinth, from the academic institutions, from the commercial galleries, from the individual artists, we have to collaborate together in ensuring the survival of the arts. And when we talk about the arts, we cannot be exclusive to say that arts resides only upon the fine arts. Fine arts is in everywhere. Be it in architecture, be it in literature, be it in films, be it in music, this is where we have to open the dimension of what art truly really is. No longer can we survive if the gallery promotes visual arts per se, it is quite fatigued now. For the last where cross disciplines, where interdisciplines come into the picture, this is where we collide, we intersect between visual arts, 
and theater, visual arts and music, visual arts and literature, visual arts and architecture, and it goes on. I think this is one way to survive. And the other to survive is to seek for cooperation and assistance from beyond those that is arts, from the other industry players, where the art can be seen to project a kind of um, commercial uh, infusion. The art can no longer, the art can no longer survive on its own without it being used as a vehicle to channel commercialism. When we put across this exhibition um, um, installation in electronic arts and sebagainya, it is also to imbibe the industry outside to look that the art has moved on from the conventional into the new medium because artists can no longer paint, can no longer sculpt, yeah, without infusing themselves to the current needs of the industry. Yes, you can remain fundamental. Yes, I'm not, I'm not disregarding that fact. But we also have to open the mind of our young artists there are other dimensions to explore. Films, advertising, graphics, design agencies, these are all the applied um, industries of art that we can, we can actually penetrate. As I say, fine art is not dominated in visual arts only. Yeah, it is onto the other realm of art. So again, I think I like to take these two words from um, Doctor. Yeah, it is integration and collaboration. That's the way to go. I think this is my my, my thoughts about it. Uh, in in response to the conversations that we have had earlier. Thank you. For your permission, well, I, did, I don't think it's fair for me to ask a question. Due to the fact that I have not read the book. <laughs> I'm so sorry, pardon my ignorance. I will definitely buy one after this. Uh, but that doesn't stop me from uh, relating to this whole interesting conversation, interesting discussion by our three panelists. And I must admit that it's very, uh, even though I have not read it, it's a very commendable book. This is the most awaited book, I guess. I don't know, I definitely get one. Because uh, we need a Malaysian history. We need a history book for the Malaysian art. Besides the series that are produced by the Malaysian narrative. Uh, having heard the whole discussion, I cannot help but relating my practice with the whole period of that mentioned just now. And uh, it is interesting or rather crucial to, to reflect my early training in the, in the art in regard to the 90s. Uh, I was trained in the 80s actually, way beyond before this book was planned. I, I was trained in the 80s and uh, the 90s was a crucial period of my practice because that's where I actually be in the industry practicing my art. And uh, there was a certain I call it a tragedy maybe because uh, we were taught in different way and we were practicing it in different way. I remember during the, the 80s when my Isa came in and then the whole Islamization of, of art, you know, the Nila Nila Islam and the Nila Pribumi and also the, the, uh, the, the, the Nila Nila Murni was instilled during my period in the 80s and then during the 90s the sudden change happened when I came back. I was obsessed with the new German. So you see, the, the, this, I was caught in this, this twisted dichotomy between those uh, uh, pedagogical approach and art making. So I guess the 90s was the, the battleground for me. I'm, to, I'm sorry I have to talk about myself. I, I'm bragging about myself here. This is a bit real, but that, that's how I have to relate to this conversation. And that period was the period so crucial for the artist who was trained in the 80s because the 80s was a, uh, 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 I remember when I was doing a figurative in UITM in the 80s 
within split second we were uh, there was an abrupt change when when um, uh, uh, Anwar Ibrahim came back with the Islamization we were forced to do a, 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 a arabesque from from figuration to arabesque so that's why the <laughs> the, the tragedy happened and uh, in the 90s was a trial period for me as an artist yeah? with that Elmo yang you been brought to you in the 80s and the sudden change of the, the, the system in the toward the end of the 80s and the mangsa or the victim which is I consider myself as a victim was the 90s period so this is an interesting period where Dr. Sharina brought up in her book which I have yet to uh, read and uh, I think also it's crucial that for the artists in my generation to sort of digest this information and reflect because it has a lot to do with who we are now so it has a lot to do with the kind of practice we are we are we are adopting now it has a lot to do with our ideology mentality and, and as basic as a stylistic approach so i think that's the point that i'm trying to bring out today and uh, of course as a as a as a byproduct of the of this twisted uh, pedagogic i think by looking at it again, that's what that's make who we are today. I think that's make me today as a, as an artist in this in this in this in this crucial period. Yeah, thank you. I don't know whether I make sense or not. <laughs> I hope I do. Yes. Okay. Okay, um, okay, we would like, like to, talking, uh, to talk about this in relation to the book, uh, relation. So my observation based on the publish, on this publication is that basically it's sort of like, uh, it's, I'm looking at, not at 2018 at the time, it's like towards the end of 2010. So that was actually the end of my PhD submission. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, yes, I was like arguing that there should be prol uh, proliferation of art, diversification of arts, you know, and like the, the famous word pl plurality of art making, like Prof. Muliadi was like also using that key word there. Um, but of course, like in relation to Dr. Sharmiza's uh, comment and also I think like the state of like it's the cycle itself, that how much would that be, um, how much extensive would that be, have it sort of like uh, I think like maybe in 2018 it has seems to be like so tired like you know it's like everywhere you're talking about like individual studios opening up you know instead of having like like late 1990s early 2000s we have like alternative spaces but now everybody all artists have their own studios and you know there's so many and um, also in terms of collaboration networking um, yes there were like very genuine collaboration and networking uh, that I see like happening in late 1990s 2000s and all that um, but now sekarang ni macam dah jadi macam suatu kebiasaan um, it's already like it's already uh, uh, kebiasaan cuma like um, not to put it in a, in a very like um, um, like the current uh, I, mean, I mean like I agree with Beverly Young like Dr. Shabizu might have like sort of like looking at it in a very uh, yeah, nostalgia and also macam lah, tak ada harapan eh. <laughs> I'm not saying to young artists like, tak ada harapan or like the students, tak ada harapan, you know, that kind of thing. Is that like, you have to think within your period in time that what else can you bring in because everything everything has been explored and tested or, you know, being done before and uh, in terms of, en you know, engagement, collaboration, networking, and stuff like that or, you know, producing artworks that, you know, uh, not only by soul, like one person, your artist, stuff, there's a lot of, you know, few hits coming out with a certain so what else it has been explored before but what else can you do uh, the thing is that all of this uh, you know when I'm drawing the examples from if, uh, for the book for example 
all of the research that I think are very significant. It has opened a lot of doors and possibilities. Um, but like, yeah, but at 2018, macam dah banyak. And it has become like, sudah biasa. Eh? Uh, then we don't see it as an event or a, a, a new, um, uh, apa ni, uh, kata dah, just a, it's an, a new exhibition, that satu event yang baru ini mencetus lah. Telah mencetus suatu uh, idea yang baru. Eh? So, dah, dia dah terlalu banyak at this point lah. Eh? But but then of course we cannot. We we were like the product of the 1990s. You know we were walking around and producing art during the 1990s. But then I think the current generation have to see themselves as the product of the 2000s. You know, the 21st century new product. So you have to, perhaps with your experience will be different than ours. Okay, we were affected by, um, you know, um, as you said, like Prof. Jai mentioned, like, you know, the way that teachers like suddenly took up, you know, everything has, everybody has to do Arabic and stuff like that, okay? Uh, you know, don't do migration anymore. But then, the conditions of 2018, or like you mentioned, like Malaysia Bahrain and all that stuff, so, so it's a new condition for all of you. So, the, I think that the current younger artists or students are thinking of pursuing art making or even like, those who do not come from an arts background but not produce artwork has to ha is having a new condition or it was not a condition at all that maybe kebebasan yang diberikan itu when it's like there's no sort of like uh, you know uh, challenge that there's no challenge to overcome then it's you must produce something which is like you challenging you know, because there's no challenge to it you know uh, of course the for me, the, the, the 1980s were the kind of art making or response or a response to a certain condition before. So now, kalau uh, kata, if today that you're arguing that there's no condition, there's, you know, uh, everything is okay, that it, uh, many ideas from different backgrounds, you know, in terms of racial experience, uh, religious experience, uh, everything is accepted and, uh, you know, well and happy and what. So how do you produce an artwork or you know some sort of collaboration that is very meaningful that can demark the current situation so that is a more much more bigger challenge i think sebab macam semuanya dah it's like all the the avant-garde dah buat kan and uh, you yeah, as new artist or young generation to i think um, has bigger I, challenge I, in sort of like positioning themselves sorry i think uh, Saubin wanted to know the limit eh? Up the extent of uh, this collaboration, uh, the extent, to what extent? Uh -huh, uh -huh. Let, 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 you know, you have, <laughs> but, but I think, uh, I don't know if she's still here. Uh, um, we are using the postmodern concept dalam context. Malaysia and okay, not uh, the yeah, Euro-America yeah. thing, right? So I think... But I, I think because uh, uh, for me, like like today, the just say the technolog technological environment, so like like you know the you know handphones and stuff like that allows you to go beyond boundaries. See, so it the issue of being nation based it dah tak relevant sebenarnya. It's not relevant anymore. So basically, you can were inspired not only by you know, like the studio's practice, studio, like your guru, like your studio, your teacher and stuff like that. But it, now, as you mentioned, that you can always like go sort of like vir virtual exhibition through the Facebook postings and stuff like that. But also can have friends from, you know, um, artists from, you know, um, other countries as well. That the condition is different. So actually, the challenge should be, macam mana you nak, how do you produce an artwork that reflective of this newer condition? So, kita dah, for me, the, the issue of sort of like having a bounded nation state issue to the other dah. Tapi the question for young artists is like how do you sort of like, you know, like create artwork is meaningful in reflecting the change of this, you know, new situation that is like boundaryless, you know, that you can, you know, just swipe credit card and go to the next country with, you know, everybody can fly now. <laughs> Does that answer your question?
Did you do, did you read the book? Did you read the book? <laughs> I think uh, uh, um, I think if you were to if you read the book lah, actually of course like the the challenge was that actually to break away from the national cultural policy and all that and all that because that was sort of like prescribed to your you know art classes studios and stuff like you know and we're talking about your ITM here yeah. But like and a lot of artists coming up from uh, ITM at the time. That was the obvious like challenge, and my main question was, like, why after like you know so called like 20 years we are like, we were talking about 1971 when your national culture policy is like 1971, but then Rupert and Jewel was you know it happens like that that, that period 74 and then 79, and of course 1980s there's a lot of like you know um, Islamic art exhibitions going around. Okay. And of course, uh, the rhetorics of, okay, now you couldn't do figurative painting and things like that. But then you think of PAM, 1990s, there's a lot of figuration coming coming back. Then, uh, and there's a lot of exploration, uh, installation, uh, of, of course, like late 1990s to performance and also collaboration, you know, we're talking about um, uh, installation and also performance, you know, mid 1990s, when, uh, some of the works. So. So that was the, if you were to ask me, that was like the sort of like the prescribed boundary lah. Kiranya that came through institution, okay, the national culture policy, national economic policy and all that, okay. Uh, but then, like because of the change of the, uh, through NEP, okay, I guess we could say that a lot of like lays, the movie with trust, um, catching up in terms of the class, okay. So instead of like, you know, the, the lower class, they become, that if the, um, Ah, uh, daripada you come, you come. Okay, uh, your background, mak bapak you, you know, like bertani, world famous, you know that. Suddenly, anak jadi uh, pecarah ke, jadi professional. Okay, so that's a quick, very, you know, big jump from that kind of background to another generation that terus professionals, you know. So that was that was the reflection of that. Okay, so that was the reflection of that. Jadi, jadi the condition or the as a result of that, the kind of art making that they do reflected the middle class conditions. Okay, the middle, middle class punya issues lah. Dia tak, dia tak memikirkan tentang poverty, isu poverty lagi. Uh, ataupun uh, kecitiran pelajaran, uh, okay, ataupun kata uh, ketuanan Melayu even anymore. Because they are, they are thinking like cross the race punya, racial punya, um, you know, very narrow narrative of problems lah. Jadi, uh, permasalahan yang diutarakan, the, the uh, Themes of the you know the artworks being produced were sort of like themes that cut across um, all uh, all you know if you can you know say it like all races. It's more of a middle class Indian issues rather than a very skewed like Malay, Chinese, Indian others issues lah. So, any more uh, suggestion? Oh, that was the last question we were. Yes, I think we can wrap up. Puan moderator, yes. Oh, okay. Terima kasih tuan pengerusi. Pagi morning. Okay, I think I think uh, a lot of things has been touched uh, today. Uh, I'm very happy that we have a quite a live, lively discussion uh, today. Uh, and for all of you who wants to. Uh, Purchase this book. You can do so uh, by. Uh, it's only twenty five ringgit. Very cheap, in fact. Uh, oh, you, I, is it for sale today? No, here, outside. Okay, you can buy them outside, or or you can also do it online, right? Uh, at the Dewan Bahasa and Pustaka punya website, uh, you can purchase. <laughs> A must buy book. Kata <laughs> Samiza. Um, well, I think I, I will not uh, elaborate more. I think everything has have been uh, said. And uh, if uh, you have more questions or you want to have a further discussion, perhaps you can directly get in touch with Sari, Dr. Sarina at... Oh, okay. Sarina.abdullah at gmail.com. Okay. <laughs> You can go to USM and, chart and, and just grab her. Yeah, okay. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Sarina, and congratulations again. Uh, this is a very, very important, I think, um, reference yeah, for all of us. Um, and uh, yeah, 
I think that's about it then. <laughs> uh, thank you very much, uh, Beverly, and also uh, Dr. Shamiza Hassan, uh, atas your, all the inputs and, 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 and uh, your opinions. Uh, thank you, Gali Petronas, Puan Rana. Terima kasih banyak.